All right, so let's just take a deep breath in and welcome everyone today on Saturday, October the 10th. Um, this beautiful, wonderful new day. Is it recording? It's recording now, yes. So let's be present, let's relax, let's uh, be aligned to each other. Let's feel our brilliance. And already you see yourself as, as a new amazing modern mystic as we uh, plunge into you know, beginning steps of this program to find out what the course is all about, to see you know what it is that you can get as benefits from it, learn from it, and what you can contribute to it. So it's not just about what we will teach you, but it's also about what you will teach yourself. And I think that's probably the main thing to, to really get. So, Cesarina, can you tell us really about the New Modern Mystics? What is the program all about? Wow, how could you sum up what is the modern mystic Santari? But I'll try. Um, I can start and then we could go around and everyone can share what called them here today and how do they express that modern mysticism in themselves because they already are that. Otherwise, they wouldn't be here. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, what is the modern mystic? Um, since my work with children in Africa in 2007, I kept feeling this rush of energy in my being. That's where I met Teresa. Teresa, from uh, my beautiful friend here on the call from Virginia, she was with me in Africa at the time. And I was writing this beautiful poetry and every day in the classroom and out of the classroom um, about being in love with life, being in love with each other, seeing the oneness, understanding that there is a, an endless picture of creative insight that comes to us when we really operate from that deeper space of magic and childlike wonder. Um, we got to open up to the intimacy of self to all and to live it. It's not enough that we talk about it anymore. We have to embody it. So every day in those, those three years in Africa, I practiced and practiced and practiced and I dreamt that one day I had this vision, one day we could do this together around the world, all of us. <laughs> so for me, it's here, it's finally manifesting. We are doing it in our own pieces of the world, in our own kingdoms of magic. So whatever you might be, um, you are that, that mystical force of life that moves worlds into being and um i tend to speak in poetry because that's how it comes to me so um whatever comes out i would let it flow with that divine guidance of the goddess inside of the magical you know childlike wonder that i've been holding for a while and i keep holding and i keep sharing and expanding and this is an abundance of life that we sit on the magical child the modern mystic the work whether you work with children it doesn't matter it does matter if you work with children because we're going to give you some tools but it's for yourself as well and really the intention of this course is you cannot be with the children at that level of magic if you don't have a, a, you know fully uncover that in yourself so if you cover, uncover it and continue to peel it in layers and it goes deeper and deeper and you're having fun with it, then that's what we're going to do here. We want to do more of it. We want to play. We, we started to do a lot of this in Tuscany and then we realized we want to open it up to, do, to use technology because why not? We can have a cup of tea. You can uh, be in nature or under a tree and still do this and in your own part of the world. Um, what is it going to stop you? Not, nothing can stop you when you know what you want and the magic in you wants to create more of that. Um, and I'll stop here because I could go on forever sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I could listen to you forever. <laughs> um, so perhaps I'll just pick up from there. I think you have to see yourself um, as a force of creation. Uh, and as a force of creation, you're unlimited, you're unbounded. Um, you're energetic, you're uh, completely very present, 
present to everything that's uh, going on around you uh, in the universe, that um, you're never really stumped for an answer to any question because you provide the questions to your answers and your answers to your questions. They all become one, really. Yeah, I think really it's about um, how you express yourself. And I think as, uh, this unbounded force of creation is perhaps a good way of, of expressing that, of, of defining that, describing it, uh, because it's very loose in its definition. And um, the things that we'll do, do on this course, the storytelling, uh, the yoga practices, the breathing practices, uh, the singing, the conversations, uh, whatever it is that we're going to be sharing together, I think it has to be touched with that sense of aliveness. Uh, and um, you, it really is, it just opens you up more and more, I think is uh, very true to say. Because as, as Serena says, um, in order for you to be childlike and to, to be with children and to, to be the fullness of yourself, you have to go to places that beckons to you and to which you must go uh, with the, the fullest of yourself. You can't go half-heartedly. You just can't go little step by little step and until we get there. Go straight there. <laughs> Be this force of creation right this moment. You know, open your arms out and feel that you're breathing the fullness of life and that it, it rushes into you and that you're allowing yourself to not just be a small part of the universe but that you fill the universe and i think that's where we um we um invite you to go to, you know just to play and to explore and to delight in what you're going to find and um take it from there <laughs> beautiful i'm gonna unmute some of you just because um i like to hear what you want to do with this. So Terry, I'll unmute you for a moment here, just in case you want to say something. Did you say Terry? Yes. Oh, um, I think the reason that I'm on this call is that part of me was very much alive when I was working with children in the school system. And um, through the years of continuing to work in the school system, I allowed that system to, to crush that out of me. And so this, <clears throat> this is a reminder because I continue to have a great desire to return to children in that way. Um, so it's um, a reminder and an unbearing of, of what is there and what was there up to several years ago. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Mary friend, I'll unmute you as well for a minute. <laughs> I, uh, I am not presently working with children, but I did at one time. And um, I raised a child too. And we used to play imaginary games. Like we were, we were putting ice, um, ice uh, balls of snowballs together and throw them at each other. And there were no snowballs or anything. Really. <laughs> you know, and we'd pick flowers that weren't there and, stuff like that so we did fun stuff and that i think alona brought out in me <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and bailey the beautiful dog is there as well so he has that playful energy with us on the on, yeah. the, yes, on the call today I've seen mm -hmm. cynthia do you want to say something sure well i am holding the attention of being able to walk in both worlds, so to speak. I am currently teaching in, you know, a um, quote unquote conventional school setting, as well as doing some metaphysical teaching uh, on the side. And I really want to be bringing all the different aspects of me together, especially when I'm with the children, whatever venue that is. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Is it Teresa? Teresa, yeah. Would you like to say something as well? Uh, sure. I never worked with children and I don't work with children, but I have three teenagers. And um, this is not for me so specifically, but about, 
about becoming more playful because I was raised in a very his family and there's and um, fortunately for me I married a, a man who's playful so I've been learning from him little by little over the last 22 years but this year I'm really stepping into my spiritual journey uh, full time and that's an aspect that's lacking for me what would you like to get from this course me yes. <laughs> I just want I want to be able to have fun all the time instead of just once in a while. <laughs> General, but um, I'm a student of a course in miracles, and this year I've been working um, on on my t ministerial tra a ministerial training program, um, which I'm almost finished with. So things have been getting lighter and lighter for me, but um, this just seemed like the next logical step. Okay. <laughs> Miracle maybe, is way up, right? <laughs> maybe you too will fly with dragons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. I think that's an important part of uh, what we're offering. That um, that sense of playfulness just seems to um, emerge. Um, at unexpected times, you don't know what we're going to be doing next. <laughs> Sometimes it's, you know, it's, it just says, well, let's do this. And, you know, before we're in it, we're doing a storytelling uh, and in that or a meditative journey. And that um, in that state, it's just like um, you suspend your sense of time and uh, you develop um, an expanded awareness and everything that would otherwise just keep you going in a loop just isn't there anymore. And that, to me, allows you to uh, to explore, to be imaginative, uh, to have fun, and uh, that's what we're seeking to um, to do, and to to inspire you to just drop into those moments unexpectedly, and um, you never know what's going to happen next. We don't know what's going to happen next. <laughs> that's right. So, Cesarina, why don't we talk about the various elements of the course um, that we've got lined up? Yeah. You know, the, the yoga, the um, breathing exercises, uh, the storytelling, etc. Yes. Um, well, there, there are things that we have planned and there are things that also you will bring in as desires and visions that we want to hear and we want to incorporate. So, um, what I've noticed in my work with myself, with my inner child and play, I have to, every day, I get excited about every little thing. So I might look at a, uh, a story or a book that's written for adults and I find an element there that could actually trigger a story for working with children or a magical story just for my own inner child to wander and, and sit and reflect on. And I will take it and I will write it. So journaling is very important for this for this journey for you because you will never know when you're pulling out of the ether all these elements, all these magical things as you encounter your own stories, your own storybooks, the stories we might weave together here. Um, if you're working with children or not, again, it doesn't matter because you are going to go deeper in your child and bring it out that way. So it works both ways. It works in many ways. Um, if you work with children, it's an enhancement because then you can bring that to your work and make it very practical and down to earth in the way that you need to, depending on the uh, ages and the groups that you are thinking to, um, you know, to experience it with. So um, storytelling is a big aspect. The singing part, Santari and I are both um, very good at stirring up that, um, I don't know, what do you call it, Santari? I mean, it's just in the moment, the toning aspect of your being, there's a frequency, there's a vibration, a signature to your voice, as you know. But when you're actually allowing yourself to come forth and sing it out, and it may not be in English, it may be in a different language, it may be in a, um, the children and I do this, and we call it the star language, uh, or the light language, because it's very magical. And I encourage them to express it. Um, it's taken me years to be able to stand here and actually do that fearlessly you know it's taken me years I used to be so shy about it and it was a gift I was born with since I was a child I sang like that um, so it might be whatever song of your heart is you know is I think we have um, 
Oh, our our our. Someone screen, left. Yeah, someone left. Our screen has just um, changed again. So um, we're getting a beep for that. But when you are starting to express the song of your being, the song of your heart, something explodes inside of you. Something opens up, and that's what we're looking at at the inner dynamics of energetically. What happens when you're able to express through the throat chakra in ways that you may not have experienced that before? Amazing miracles happen when you express through the throat chakra. This is really the key. It's like a bridge between the lower part, the lower aspect of your being, which are, you know, the survival in the world and the practical job and the things you have to do. And then going up here from the heart up through the throat, through this bridge, you go through that Buddha like nature, through that illumination, through that, you know, everyday intimacy with oneness, with the divine. Um, um, source and like Santari said, the force of creation. So you're having to have this open and a lot of us, we have constricted and contracted in this, this throat center. And of course we will through the singing, through the expression, through the speaking, allowing yourself to sing your heart out and express through conversations on this call and storytelling. And we're going to burst that open. And it's, I know it sounds scary, but it's really a very necessary step to joyfully burst this, this thing open, this energy here that may be the key to your next journey in the depth of who you are. It's really, for me, has, it has been a work of years and years of expressing to get it open. So, and this, the quantum creativity, by the way, Santari, I probably didn't tell you this, our whole journey with our quantum creativity show has been part of that. Me allowing myself to step forward and not care what others thought and just be myself and shine. So giving yourself permission to step forward and speak your truth, be your truth, sing your truth, story tell your truth, whatever it is that your truth, your authentic self needs in this moment of time. We do not any longer need half versions of ourselves. Like Santari said, we need the full version of you and us and me and to step forward and be the giants of creative giants of helping co-create this new earth. I think it's very interesting when we talk about voice and some people have a, an idea that you're wanting them to speak powerfully or you're wanting them to, 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 to sing in a particular way. But it's not about that at all. Uh, it's really about um, allowing um, another voice to, to come into play. Well, not the voice of, I'm trying to think of what to say next, but the voice of um, the, the being that you know that you are in, in an amazing way, and the, the fullestness of yourself. Uh, the, I call it a force of creation for want of a better description, but it's, um, it's something which is so big it's uncontainable. And it's that power of you which almost like wants to be spoken, wants to be expressed, wants to be given um, um, to the world in, in whatever way is possible. And once you feel moved to, to speak in, very, um, in, very me in a very measured way almost, because that's what the breathing is also about, to be able to move you away from thinking about who you are and what you should be speaking about. And it drops you into a place where you're not, it's not about you anymore. It's about you really uh, in a relationship with life. Life in big capital letters. Life with every being in this world. Life with the, the forces of nature and of creation. Life in, in every way that you could think about it. It is that moment when you feel that connectedness and that wanting to to be it and to to love everything and to know that everything is really in such a, a harmony and a balance and this uh, state of uh, joy and ecstasy. That is really the, the moment when that voice suddenly starts to kick in and it starts to tell you about the beauty of life, of the magic and the majesty and the power and the exhilaration, you know, that can be felt by you in every moment. And something in you sort of like arises up and wants to be that and desires to be that and has to be that. Uh, so you have to take away all the thoughts about 
who you are and what your speaking voice is and how you might sound to other people, what they will think about you, that is no longer relevant. <laughs> what is important is that you be this powerful being, very present. And from that place, anything at all is possible. You would have a fantastic relation with everyone. So that for me is what really the, the voice is all about. The storytelling, the breathing exercises, uh, the yoga exercises too, to get you into the state of complete relaxation where you feel so, so much embraced, you know, by being in this physical form uh, that you, you love the physicality of it. You love the joy of the physicality of it. And any aches and pains that you might, you might um, encounter uh, they are part of being in the physicality, uh, but you change your relationship with the pain and the aches and the feeling of stiffness. Uh, and by your doing that, it's sort of like something in you, um, uh, again, changes to allow um, there to be a continual expression of magnificence. <laughs> Oh, that really is a joy. And that was, and that was just the that, that was just the power of the voice, right? Um, and covers the storytelling, the singing, the expression of who you are, and the signature. And then you mentioned the yoga, of course. Um, the movement is so huge to move the energy through. Now, again, you're thinking, "Oh, I have to be an expert yoga to do." It. No, you don't have to be an. You you don't even have to know some of the poses because there's so many resources and things that we can share that I can show you here that you could take into your circle of children or classroom or whatever you are with yourself and look at them and, and practice on your own and enjoy and turn it into a, a body prayer, body meditation, body, whatever you want to call it, body um, expression of that energy, that light, um, your light body coming into form, really, your light body coming into physical form through the movement, through dance. Um, I use a lot of singing, dancing, and, and stretching, and um, storytelling with, here we go. For a moment, for a moment here, I don't know what happened, but I was like uh, out of the screen. So, um, so all of this mix, all this blended mix of magic. The space. Did you say something, Santari? I said you went in the timeless space. Yes, I think I did. It was like a loop or something. I just went out and came back in. It was funny. Um, as we're, you know, as we're using technology to really be able to do this inner work. And this is the beauty for me that here we are, uh, you know, using the technology today to be able to go deep in our own inner world so we can share from that space together and encourage and expand whatever we are, our work. And that, that thrills me. That's the exciting part for me that. No matter where you are, on the top of the mountain, on, on the, in the valley, in California, and Arizona, and Santari is in UK, and Virginia, Cincinnati, it doesn't matter, uh, Japan, you can, you, can be your magical, um, you can be your magical self and do it and practice it and embody it in your work every day, every moment. You're back. I'm back. So I'll let anyone else uh, speak or we can start with a little something, Santari, if you'd like to. I might give you, it could be very well my connection. Um, so if you'd like to, um, there's a way to, um, let's see, to have you as a host somewhere, I could do that as well, if you prefer. You don't have to. Are you still there? Just... Okay, good. For a moment, I was... Um... Yes, I'm still. Okay, good. So if you want to, we can pull up, I, um, we can pull up the little screen to share it with... Um... You might have it on, right? Sandari will share screen. So that they can get an idea of what some of the themes um, of the journey might be. Of course, um, these are general themes. There's so much to cover under each of them um, as we go through the journey itself and delight ourselves. And I will look for 
see who who has it first. I will try to open it on here. And then let me know if everyone can see it okay. And for those who can't see right now, you'll be able to see them later when you look at the um, at the video. So. Okay, I think we got it on here. Are you able to here share screen? Let's see if you'll let me share my screen. There we go. Okay. Anyone can see this little screen? Oh right. yes. Okay. So why do we do what are we doing this? Um because we believe in the magic of life. And a few years ago, I came up with the acronym for life as love and full ecstasy. Because um, if I don't live that love in my heart, in fullness, in its fullness, in, in the blissful, ecstatic, you know, just like the mystical poets did long ago, then for me, um, you know, I'm going to always seek. If I'm not having that in every moment, I'm going to seek that because I know it's doable and practical and it's livable right now. So that's what we're doing this. So we can get to that consistency of loving in full ecstasy in every moment, loving with our beingness, with our work, with the way that we, all aspects of us, like Santari mentioned. Um, and to anchor that into physical expression. Because simply thinking of it and moving on with new action doesn't cut it. We want to have consistency. We want to raise this next generation of mystics, the children, the new children, the way that we raise ourselves up. So as we're raising our mystical child in us to come up to the surface, we're raising them as well. And here are the things I'm going to show you through the journey ahead. We have um, next week our first actual call is um the theme of it is awakening or awaken and it's on october 17th same time here um in the zoom uh, virtual room and then on november we have two calls we alternate one and two calls a month and they're usually on saturday the same time november 7th the awareness theme november 21st the asking december 5th the clarity and as we start in January with the world of energy, commitment and intention, January 9th, January 23rd, the second call, gift of grace. And then we go on through February with sacred spaces, intimacy and blessedness. And then we go on with March, one call in March for rebirthing of everything. And then April, we have two calls. Um, Actually, um, I skipped March. I'm sorry. March has two calls, and it's power and authority and emergence. And then April has two calls, creative passion and artistic expression, magical and mystical worlds. And then May has one call, and that's the rebirthing of everything. So as we are going and leaving these um, and showing you this, I like to see if anyone has a question about any of these. Um, any of these things? I'm gonna show ourselves here. There we go. Here we are. Trying to uh, get us show show the large screen, and I'm seeing Teresa, <laughs> and then I'm seeing only Teresa. So I guess I use wanting to say something, Teresa, because you keep popping up in my. And my on my screen, <laughs> you smile. It looks good to me. <clears throat> well, perhaps you also should mention, Cesarina, since you're on that page, that you say there there's a full access to all ten Mirador yes, yoga teacher training and creativity coach online modules. Yes. Perhaps you could just briefly mention what that will be about. Yes. Um, we'll go back to share for a moment. Um, if I can go to the here we go. So um, the beauty of this is I wanted to introduce uh, everyone to that part of my 
program, which I'm going to open up for you here. When you go under the curriculum page, you go and click on each of these modules, and then you have to enter, which I will do now, a password that you're given, and you go in, and this beautiful, magical world opens up to you. This is just a little sampler, and you just come through, and there's lots of magic awaiting you, lots of ideas, resources, um, things about my own model of coaching, the Mirador embodiment method that I have been practicing in my life, and that is part of my transformation with the children, and I use it very consistently. Um, and as you go through, you can read about that lotus flower and how the lotus beautiful lotus flower comes out of the mud the mud of our own drama the mud of our own challenges and uh you know um stirring and transformation and it comes up to the surface and it blooms and this is what the magical inner child is it blooms to the surface after all our journeys after all stirring and um waves and waves of transformation and as it blooms it expands its beauty and its fragrance out into the whole world around it so we got the petals of this lotus opening up as a coaching model for you in mirador you can read on about all of them we have life coaching creativity coaching components because everything that is part of what i've done all my skills um, and all my trainings have been put in this, um, in this program that I work with adults, uh, inspiring them to use these coaching tools with children. Um, it's not enough anymore what we've learned as teachers. I found that out a few years back that we have to use the beautiful, magical skills that we already are born with, and we have to use any other skill and resource we can to mix it up. We have neuroscience templates. We have all sorts of, if you look through here, techniques, trainings, practices, children's um, yoga sequences. Um, some of them are very visual as, you, as I go through and show you. Some are um, you know, set and sorted through different themes because if you're working in a classroom or if you're working at a center, if you're working with yourself and you're just wanting to do it for the fun of it, um, you can think of, you know, well, today I feel like it's, uh, I like to do something for fall, something magical, which you might do today on our call, something short to inspire you that I've done this week with the children and myself, something for fall that is magical. What can I do for fall for the theme of that season? Well, there's so much you could do for that season. As a matter of fact, as you go through these online modules, you'll have a whole unit on all the seasons and all fun activities. There are recommended books and CDs here. There's materials and lists of things. So this is just one of those 10, as you can tell, there's a lot here. I'm just kind of going through and showing you. Um, and that is my abundance that I want to share. That is part of my abundant work that I've been working um, here in Cincinnati with the groups of teachers or adults who have come forth to embody these mystical um, beings that they are more. So I've been sharing that, uh, the online modules with them. So now it's time to share with you. Uh, wherever you are and then um, we have we are going to be creating um, we already have a group on Facebook but we'll create a special closed group just for those who are going to go through the journey so that we can all have more intimate conversations there um, and um, of course we have the emails and um, the group emails and anything else that is needed for you any questions along the way of how do I do this what do I need now uh, I'm here I'm having this challenge what do I how do I move through that wave of that energy or that feels like a block to me as you're putting them in practice we, we would love to hear how it's working out for you and what you need next that's very practical uh, very practical part of this program um, so we're actually practicing doing magical things but also taking them out into the world being encouraged having the support and actually testing it experiment with it bring it back see what you find out i do the same with you i'll go out and whatever we talk about here something new that i get an idea i will go immediately use it with myself and the children come back and get excited and tell you how they help me to evolve that idea and maybe transform it into something new when you practice so to summarize then, 
Yes, that was a lot. <laughs> Summarize what you'll get is um, all the teaching tools that Cesarina has just mentioned on her website, uh, and uh, you make your way through them in your own time. Uh, you have the 12 live video calls. Um, if you can't make a video call, then it will be there on the website for you to look at and to listen to at your leisure, but also to take part in the uh, Facebook um, uh, private group, which will set up for you too. And also there's emails, which you, if you want to ask questions, uh, to gain further insights, uh, we can do shared emails in that way. So it's really to um, encourage you to look at these different aspects of life and expression of life uh, to find out um, in your relationship with other people, they don't have to be with children all the time, how you relate to people perhaps differently than um, you have previously. Uh, what is opening up inside you um, as your expression of yourself? And to almost like be aware that there's something more which is always wanting to um, converse with you. And uh, let me just say, it's just like life speaks to you in so many different ways. And the language of life is through dance, it's through music, through sound. You know, it's, um, it's how you feel something perhaps, how you speak to a dog or cat, how you speak to your flowers. Um, there's all these different ways of communicating that we have, which sometimes we don't make the fullest advantage of it because something in the nervous system perhaps says, I can't, or it's too much, or not now. So you find moments where you just sit down to appreciate what, what this experience of life can be more opened up to for yourself. And that I think is, you know, the gift of being the new modern mystic. <laughs> so does anybody have any comments or questions so far? Don't be shy. <laughs> Perhaps we go through, we should go through a, a little journey and then they will have questions or maybe share what they're seeing and doing. Should we do that some time? Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> Mari Fran, you might be happy to know that my magical, beautiful <laughs> ball that you gifted me, that lights up, is with me today. <laughs> Her friend gifted me this because she said I could take it to the children. I'm showing it to everyone. It's literally a, a little plastic spiky ball that when you tap it down, it just lights up and the children love it. And we hold it on the tips of our finger and we put it to our heart and we, we sing our namaste song. The light in my heart sees the light in your heart. And we do that for quite a while and it calms them all down. <laughs> It's on, my, it's on my, in my hands. I know, I, I thought I might make you laugh for a minute here. <laughs> oh, there well, it goes. I can see the activity behind Mary Fran, the uh, play with the dog. <laughs> I see. <laughs> it's barely running circles. It's, it's all part of it. This is part of me being magical. Okay. Yes, yes. I believe in magic. <laughs> yeah. It's in your fingertips. Well. It's in your fingertips. You light up like this as well. You just don't see it, but you light every cell of your body. I think lights up like this when you oh. when you're with magical people. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's in the closet. <laughs> if you can find so, should we do a journey? Yes, let's do a journey. If you're ready, magical beings. <laughs> Get yourself comfortable. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Maybe not so comfortable that you're going to fall asleep. <laughs> oh, if you do, what the heck? Yes, go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you have yours. Okay, she's got her light now. We, we're going to light up the world with these. <laughs> I'm a hitman. It's now doing it? Okay. Yeah, there it goes. There, there it goes. Go. Okay. Yeah, yeah. My last a little longer. Look at that. <laughs> oh. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so just take a deep breath. Yeah. Be relaxed. Right, close your eyes or keep your eyes open. It doesn't matter. But feel that every sense is really on full alert. That you can almost feel the heartbeat of the world. You can feel like there's this breath of life that gently caresses you. And that every cell of you just seems to light up. Perhaps very gently at first. But you can be the heartbeat of this world. You can be this powerful presence that animates all of life. As if the whole of this world is in your care, in your charge. And your breath is like a song. And perhaps you feel that you can communicate with every single being. Not trying to hear what they say, but to feel their presence. As if your presence has the power to light everybody up. You touch into that magical self. And you know that your magical self calls to everyone else. To their magical self. But not just to human beings, but to all forms of life. not just a small human being. You are a presence, a force, a movement of life. You change the vibration and the essence of everything. You bring it into a deeper frequency of itself. You heighten it, you enhance it. You let it become what it wants to become. And because you are the being, everyone else can become this being. Everyone else can know what it is that you speak about what you feel. 
in this most deepest part of yourself. And you send a ripple through the world. And in this ripple, everything is given you life. For you are the breath of life. So breathe all that in. And open your eyes once again. So says Rena, big smile on your face. <laughs> what happened for you? May I be able to speak after this? I, I, I'm feeling so tingly right now in my body. I'm literally lifting off the ground if I could. Oh. <laughs> well, I, um, I'll try to catch some words that come to me. This is what light feels like when it fully um, settles into the physicality. So what you're feeling, what everyone and myself right now probably are feeling, the tingling, is how the power of the words through your mouth, Santari, brings the light into someone else's body. That's a magical skill. So anyone could do it, apparently, not just you. So we're sharing that anyone on the call could do this. Bring the light into yourself and in others just by speaking it in a journey or speaking it as words in a conversation. Um, how does it feel to be light in a physical body? I'm um, super tingly. <laughs> I'm super tingly and I'm feeling so... Um, oh, do I have the word for it? Um, just like this this thing. I'm feeling like I'm this bursting light and it's expanding and contracting and it's expanding and contracting. And that's really the, the breath of the universe in us. It's breathing us in and breathing us out. We're being kissed from within our being in every moment. And all we have to do is accept that love. And it's kissing us, this beingness of magic. It's us and it's our beloved. So here I am. I'm saying yes to that kiss. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you notice the words that I use, I said, um, about being the breath of life. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you drop the idea of who you might be in order to allow something um more purposeful perhaps more expansive um something else to be in this place and be in you for you to be present is that uh, force um force of creation I, I i give it that those those words when you are that um you speak differently mm -hmm. Uh, and it isn't just about the, the, the sound of the voice and the, the tones that I use. It is that, but it is also this presence that you bring, that you embody. Because that almost like, uh, for everybody on the call, they are also being filled with this presence. If you are feeling it and being it, then everyone else is feeling it and being it as well. And I think that's when, you know, it just uh, opens itself out and you, you talk about the world having, having this and being this. 
that it is like it suddenly starts to gain momentum and everybody in the world starts to feel the potential of being something much more than they have previously previously allowed themselves to be. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, it is you, know, you emerge as something much, much more. But let's hear from Mary Fran, Fran uh, what it is that you experienced? Well, for me, it was expansion. That was the big thing. I feel light, you know, like lighter as well as the object of light, you know, it's, it's weightless. Exactly. Uh, Teresa? Um, I don't know if you can see here. I'm sitting outside on the Chesapeake Bay. Wow. While you were, I could, um, I could just feel the, the wind blowing through the trees and the leaves dancing. And I just felt like I was a part of all of that energy that was moving through the nature here. Wow. Oh, I can see it. We can see the tops of the trees. Yeah, it's shaped like a heart. I it is. It's shaped like a heart. Wow. <laughs> and the birds uh, chirping behind me and all of the sounds and the, oh. the breeze here. I just felt like a part of it. Gorgeous. Well, you're not separate from it. <laughs> separate a lot of times most of the time <laughs> not at this moment <laughs> <laughs> and what about uh, someone else on the call Cynthia would you like to or or Terry you're free to speak if you'd like to share uh, yes I would uh, this is Cynthia and I'd love to share that after Teresa's sharing I um, actually I grew up near the Chesapeake Bay so it's bringing back some beautiful memories for me <laughs> And um, in terms of the meditation, it really helped me to tap into Christ consciousness when you said that, you know, being the breath of life. Mm. So I'm just favoring that experience. Mm. Excellent. When you feel that, what happens in you? Dropping down to a deep place within, really feeling that calm core center. Mm. And you feel that perhaps you could maintain that consistently day after day i feel like that's the invitation yes yay <laughs> that's the invitation yes <laughs> exactly i will unmute you um here um terry here let's see so that you can if you'd like to say something it gave me a clarification um all this week when I've been driving, I've seen an incredible amount of people making U-turns. And I knew that held a message for me, and I kept thinking, what is this U-turn? This is U-turn, and I said, do I go back to public education? Do, do, that didn't feel right. And so as you were guiding us through that, Centauri, I realized that the U-turn is, is back to my true self, back to that mystical, magical self that I was so in tune with um, as a child. And the moments that I still can, can do that. But um, Cynthia, what you just said about an invitation, um, that word is, is perfect. So these U-turns I've been seeing all week are the invitation to go back to that beautiful essence and, and live from that beautiful essence you know, every moment of every day and to know that that shift will continue to bring magic um, into my life and everyone else's life that I touch. It's wonderful. Yes. <laughs> of course, it isn't just about ourselves, just as you rightly say, it is, it's about everybody else as well. Mm -hmm. Friends, family, you know, in the workplace. You, sometimes you just don't know what the effects of, of being expansive has on other people mm -hmm. but that's what we're demonstrating on the call just lead you into a journey just say a few things mm -hmm. you have an experience perhaps you're moved by the experience it gives you a confirmation perhaps something becomes more um clear uh, understandable things fall into place uh, and your life takes a different turn so 
Yeah, that really works. It's perfect. I like what you said. Wow. Should so, we take it into a, an actual physical movement and put a song on and actually move where you are? So we don't even have to stand up because it's moving the chair. And now take that light energy that you've been. Um, I just need to open my iTunes in here. Take the light energy that you've been and bring it into your physical. Um, which that's what I love to do a lot with myself and the children. Um, I love to, I'm going to play this beautiful um, song that my friend Nicole record, um, gave me, gifted me. She recorded this years ago and I played it in Africa a lot. So Teresa might recognize it. So let's just take a moment whether you can see us or not stretch and wherever you are open your arms and lift them up open your heart bring those arms back and go ahead inhale reach up with your heart and go down inhale again slow down your breath and become the love and the light that's back Breathe it into yourself, into your body, into any part of you that feels tired or sore or tense. And then gently twist, work with that beautiful spine, let that spine open. Breathing into one side, breathing into the other side. And then allow your rainbow, your rainbow colors, to follow you over your head. Bring the rainbow over, stretching to one side, one arm up. There's your rainbow covering me with sparkles. Breathing in all the colors of you, all shades and all colors, all aspects of you coming in and to hold. Breathe it in, breathe it out. Feel that deep stretch and the light into your sides of the body. It's that easy. Arms to the sides, little circles, little wings, and turning and expanding into big wings. Bigger, bigger wings. Interlace those fingers behind. Those wings. Gently twisting with the wings. Just doing some macros. Opening that throat chakra in the same One side, we switch. Shoulders can come up and drop. Playfully. Allowing your shoulders to support you, support and help you. Little spirals, forward and down. Just bring those hands together. Rub them, bring that healing power, your sacred energy into this moment of now to your heart. Breathe it in. And just spend a moment listening to your heartbeat. Listen to your heartbeat. I am 
Just a, a little reminder as you listen to your heartbeat, knowing that you are that sacred space. So when you go deeply into the sacred space, your mystical and magical inner self, the childlike wonder, the soul quality of who you really are, and you constantly nurture that, you are walking sacred space everywhere you go you have a sacred space to give to the world to enter in so that's what happens to me every day i never i can never separate when there's a sacred space whether it's in my living space or it's in a classroom or a hallway and a school uh, i've been given hallways i've been given gyms i've been given um concrete hallways in between classrooms to use for children's uh, circles i've taken them and turned them into the most magical sacred amazing magical spaces um whatever they've given me it doesn't matter because to me it's it's not about the space so much yes the space is there the physical space it's just one dimension i have the magic to bring to it so therefore I turn it into whatever I wanted to a forest um, an ocean a, a sea or ocean um, a magical um, book uh, the whole space becomes a whole world a whole new world and this is what this does to you as well if I can encourage you that is my wish and hope as you read on the website I put it in there I said if I can encourage you in every moment every breath to do that to realize that how easy this can be. Of course, it takes a little practice, and of course, it takes encouragement, and of course, it takes to know. It takes you to know that you're not alone, and that we, you know, we're here for that. Um, and the journey does help bring momentum to you because then you have something um, to come to a different space like this, a circle to come to and say, "Hey, I tried this this week. I did it. I brought my sacred space to I don't know to Walmart." to uh, the middle of the parking lot. And I did something amazing. Something came, I don't know what happened, something, the presence took over, the mystical me took over and I did something, or in my classroom. Um, but then I didn't know what to do next. What do I know next? So you can come in with those kind of questions because things like that will happen to you now that you opened up. That is really what it is all about. Something gets stirred up and you can't stop it. You wouldn't want to go back to another version of you that does not feel magical after you stir up the magic. Trust me, <laughs> I, it doesn't work. It does not work. <laughs> so. yep. You can't go back in the box. <laughs> How did everyone feel through that little gentle movement? We of course do more of this. Uh, I just wanted to give you a little primer that you could do any of these poses that we'll learn and, and stretches in the chair, um, on the I can even show you on the floor here, um, or standing up. Very easy, simple things you do with yourself to open up the energy body and the physical body, but also help them as children to do that because children need that extra support. Um, they're going through a lot. The new children are very gifted, very brilliant, and they're dealing with a lot of pressures, as you know, from a system that doesn't support them. So there you become this guiding mystical light for them in your own way. So whatever your role is to play, that's what I do too. So um, I wanted to show them my fairy today. It's a toy. <laughs> it's a fairy toy that, um, you know, um, Again, it's a little prop. Sometimes, every time I do an experience, when I create magic with children, I bring something in the center of the circle. So in my case, it might be a piece of fabric, it might be a fairy, it might be a little dragon, it might be a flower, it might be simply a, a candle. And I, I call it the garden, our creative garden, our yoga and creativity garden, whatever you want to call it, you name it. And um, it sets the mode, it sets the tone. Now it can be a, the simplest thing. This is a plastic toy. It looks real to them. To them, it takes them into a magical world. Mm -hmm. 
So um, it could be the the uh, the little ball that lights up, which you pass around and say hello, and everyone gets to introduce each other and share a feeling, um, or a gratitude, a piece of gratitude. It could be anything, and that's just a little start to lining up that energy, creating a template from the beginning with yourself and them, or with yourself every day. Again, you translate this work to whatever you need it to be. Um, and that's, it's as, e as easy or as simple as that when I start. Mm. I think also, um, it's very easy to, uh, once you set something in motion like that, and you, it's great to have a prop, you know, have lots of dragons <laughs> in our house, you know, always, always staring at me. Does the dragon have a name, Santari? Um, I give names to all my special props. That's Vasha, Vasha. Vasha, okay. Yeah, I have quite a few dragons. You can probably see one big yeah. one behind me here. Mm -hmm. um, it's good to have um, props of various sorts, but um, I think the most important thing is to almost like um, not just hold the energy space mm -hmm. for something to happen, but as you felt earlier when I said you about being the breath of life, um, when you are declaring something like that, then you literally do embody it. And uh, that it's in itself, the energetics of that will actually um, do the job of, of whatever you're there to do. Mm -hmm. Whether it is to um, empower children, uh, whether it is to um, show people how to relax and uh, to, to breathe in a different way whether it's to, to inspire people to fall into this trance of their magical self and to find out and discover what is this magical self? You know, where does it lie? How, how, do, I, how do I activate it? How do I get it out more? Well, they're all good questions to ask, but you've got, almost like got to set the, um, the, the ball rolling by saying, I am this being. I am this magical being. Uh, I am the, the force of life. And um, something changes in the energe energetics of with the, the space in which you're being when you do that. So I'd encourage you to try that out, um, to declare and to say that you are whatever it is, dot, 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 and to see what changes in you, mm -hmm. um, how it affects the space around you, how it affects other people when they come in contact with you. Uh, sometimes it's very something that's very subtle that um, you notice. Uh, other times it's like people will really feel that something's different. They can't quite say what the difference is, but it's noticeable. And I think, you know, that's where you gain um, confirmation that this works. And with the confirmation becomes also the confidence that we're not just talking about things and um, somehow they, they happen. You're being this, and something appears, and something gets changed, and that force of nature, that force of life, actually has a um, focal point, and you are being the focal point. So let's, uh, let's open it up and see if anybody has any questions about anything that we've talked about so far. Or any questions you might have about the course itself? Any questions? <laughs> I just, I just would like to, can you hear me, Santari? Yes. yes. Um, I just want to say I'm my lesson, my workbook lesson for today is myself. I am the ruler of the universe, and I feel like this is all tied in perfectly with what I'm supposed to be learning today mm, wow how does it feel oh, i feel great <laughs> <laughs> when you when you say that does something speak to you or suggest itself don't know if I can put it into words. Um, it's always challenging for me. I'm visiting my parents right now. It's always challenging for me to come to be around them because they have a completely different worldview than I have. And um, 
So I just feel like um, more grounded now and able to survive my weekend here. <laughs> <laughs> not to live, but to be a good influence, you know. Hmm. To be the most amazing version of yourself that you can be. So, Mary, Mary Fran, do you have any questions? Oh um, no! Um, well, I, I, is there going to be homework? <laughs> 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 no, practice. Yes, there's going to be magical homework to find things to do. <laughs> Mary Fran loves that. I know she loves that. Yes, there's, there's pieces of homework on the online uh, modules as well for journaling um, and for watching. There's a lot of really cute videos of different things um, that you would love to sample. And we can also give you, Santana and I can also give you uh, pieces of fun homework to practice through the week as well. And um, through creative writing, perhaps, Santari, or gen um you know, through movement or through actually making up stories because we want to weave stories together as well in the moment or we do some on the call. So probably start them right off the bat and get you into that place of the inner journey. So you are able to weave those inner journeys yourself for others and for yourself. Mm -hmm. Just like that in the moment. <laughs> Thank you. That's an amazing gift actually to be able to do that with other people, take them on um, journeys. Because you don't know where the journey is going to go when you open your mouth. But somehow something spills out. And I think, you know, that is the, um, that would indicate that you're not thinking, that you're not um, headbound, but actually your, your focus is in a different place. And that is that expansive feel. You know, for me to be able to take you on a journey, I have to be that expansive. I have to feel that I am the, uh, the breath of the universe, you know, that's, you know, that sets things in motion. Uh, because from that place, you will experience something far more and beyond than if I try to think it and imagine it that way. Yeah. Uh, because it will be your own creation that kicks in. Well, and then it's not limited by your identity. No, that's true. That's right. Not limited at all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Cynthia, does Cynthia have a question? Perhaps. Uh, no, no, thank you. Not no, okay. We just ask anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, do you have any questions? Here, hold on. I have to get you uh, unmuted. I just now unmuted you. No, I don't have any questions either, but thank you. Okay. So, what is, what is there left to do? in this taster? Well, we have a, um, I think we, let's see, we have a few more minutes, right? Um, and I wanted to perhaps weave a little story if they want to um, do it together. I started one with my children today and this, um, and it was all about fall. So what I ended up doing, I'll take it up and show you. Um, of course, my creativity in the moment um, did this. I happen to have a little garland at home for decorating in my own living space with leaves. And I was getting excited to go teach a particular story or do a particular circle for the children. And then all of a sudden, I felt like I didn't want to go do that. I just wanted to be, um, to have this fall magic with me. And then something told me, my, my inner voice, my magical child said, why don't you grab this garland, cut it in two, and make these beautiful crowns for the children. So what I did is I created this beautiful, very simple crowns. Um, each garland made like two of them. And, um, and I took them with me. I had no idea how the children would respond to it, of course. And um, I didn't bring them out the first thing because I, you know, you know how children are, they get so excited and you, you, can't, you can't focus anymore for the each step at a time. So you want to play, you, know, you want to flow with the playfulness of it. And so I had them hidden in a bag. And then I said to them, well, I found these beautiful songs on a CD 
And one of them talks about a very special little girl named Mary who is going into the forest and she is looking at the leaves falling down and she's picking up leaves and um, she creates, she, she makes a crown for herself. And I said, well, I was, I was telling them the truth. I said, I, while I was listening to that song, I got this vision in my head that we should do a story with fall fairies. And of course, they all got really excited. Fall fairies, yes, fall fairies. And so... So, of course, my story started, I had the beginning of it, I didn't have the end of it, because sometimes that's what happens to you when you're super creative and you're on a mystical path. You don't want to have an end to what you're going to do. You want to have a starting journey, and then you want to allow everyone and invite them in, the children the same, this call the same. You want to invite them in to co-create, because there's more zazzle, more pizzazz, more sparkle, uh, to that and why be boring right so you've got to be super magical if you're doing this you've got to go all the way so I brought in my idea that it was a fall morning and we're doing a, a gentle little breath so let's take a deep breath in and breathe in the fall air imagine the wind, the breeze, like Teresa was saying, was coming through the trees. We might, if you're with children and doing one of these yoga creativity classes, you might have them do a tree pose, which is very easy to do. And um, you, might, you might come and stand on a tree pose. You don't have to do it right now, but as you know, the tree pose is all about, the tree pose is all about being strong and having really strong roots and you want to show them the trees can also some of them might be strong like this and stay tall and you might do this this beautiful tree pose or you might show the wind through the you might show the wind through the trees so the wind is moving like this you gently might put a song on to have them do a little dance or they move with the wind and they show the leaves falling down the leaves might be falling down like this and they do some stretches for their hands and their wrists. And, um, and then eventually what happened is I went into a meadow because, of course, I love nature. So I told them uh, we're in a meadow now. It was sort of in a journey but with movement. And their eyes are open and they're using their body, of, go of course. And, and I said there are flowers, still flowers because it's early fall. And each flower... It's morning time, starts to, the sun starts to shine. You could do a sun, a really beautiful movement for the sun shining, where you really open up your heart and turn it into a guided uh, visualization where the heart center becomes the sun. So you're, you're beaming that light out from your own inner being out to the world. And then um, each flower opened up. And for the flower pose, we are usually in a butterfly. I can, I can show you that as well. This is the fun of it. This is the entertainment part. You get to see me do all kinds of poses on the floor. So I'm going to be sitting down in the butterfly pose. And this is the butterfly pose. And, and then I'm going to take my hands up and do my flower pose, which is my flower pose. So the flower opens in the morning, opens up like that, and the sun shines. And each flower has a special bedroom for a fairy, a special bed where the fairy wakes up every morning inside that flower. So of course, if you don't have a, t I had a, a special little, um, you know, fairy coming out of the flower. You don't have to have this, but you can give them the visual. And the, the fairy pose is very easy to do. We did something like this a bit earlier when we were doing our little song, um, playing the little song. You bring your hands back and you just stretch your arms and be a fairy. There's a fairy wings where you could just have fairy wings like this. Very easy to do with yourself. I'm a fairy. I'm actually embodying a fairy right now. And of course, for children, they don't think about it. They just do it. For us, we think, oh, I'm really a fairy, really. Um, so it gets you into that space of it's very easy to sink into the being of a fairy or a nature spirit or whatever it is um, a gnome or whatever you want to create in your story so my story goes on by saying that each fairy wakes up out of her bed she flutters her she moves her wings she stretches and this was a really nice stretch the children taught me this week um, they said well we want our fairy to be like this we want our fairy to move like this 
So our legs go forward and our feet are together. So it looks like a butterfly pose, but it goes like this at the same time. So it's almost like rowing a boat. So they wanted the fairy to do, they wanted the fairy to do this very expansive move, which really I was not aware of that move. I was not aware of that pose. They created one for me. So now I have this gentle move of a fairy opening wings with the feet and the arms. And then the storytelling goes on. Um, they, um, I asked the children, I said, what happens next after the fairies woke up from their bed and hopped out of the flower? And they said, perhaps they need to have breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I said, sure. So what kind of breakfast the fairies have? And they said, you know, every flower has nectar. And perhaps they need to sip the nectar of different flowers because they woke up in their own bed and their own flower. Perhaps they need to go around and sip the nectar of different flowers. So I thought that was a great idea. I agreed with them. And I said, could they use a breathing exercise for sipping nectar? And that's where you can come in and design right there a wonderful breathing exercise. Now, what we did with ours was very simple. We just were breathing in through our mouth, like through a, a straw, and exhaling through our nose, which is not the normal way of breathing, but we're doing something different to experience how that feel in our body for breathing through our mouth first. So let's do it together. We sip through the mouth, and then exhale, closing the mouth through our nose. And that, believe it or not, there was a very calming effect it had on all of us. And all of a sudden, all these fairies were very, very present. And then I said, what happens next? And that's where it becomes really interesting, because I don't remember, but there were many people who, or many children in the group who took us in different directions. And we had as many stories as, as the number of children that were in the group, which was very thrilling to me. And that's when I should have recorded it all so I can have it later to transcribe, but I did not. So I want to open it up to you, and I want to see what you might want the fairies to do next. <laughs> I think they make music. You think they make music? That's a good point. I think I would love them to make some music too. Anyone else would love the fairies to do something else? Well, my fairies are traveling to Tuscany and to <laughs> other countries and cities and enjoying, like stopping everywhere and tasting the, the joys of every country. Beautiful. Go to Romania. You could go to Romania. Yeah. That's true. And lots, lots of joyous places, England. Stop in London, have tea with the queen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they could do that. <laughs> That's beautiful. Wow, Mary, Mary Fran. What a great thought for the, for the adventure. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mary Fran, Tuscany, 2016. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I followed your journey, and I love it. It's yeah. great. We'll see you there. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> fairies could fly. Oh, yeah. The fairies could fly. Alona said fairies could fly too. Yeah, so they could they, fly. So the they don't just hop over to the next country. They fly. They fly. Yeah. They really do. <laughs> Anyone else would like to, to, to tell us what the story could, you know, again, you can take it in any direction. I'll share some more as well after you share. It's your turn. We're going to go around this virtual circle. See what the fairies are up to. Fall fairies. Oh, really My fairies are jumping on a, a leaf and taking a ride down as it falls, and then oh. they scurry back up to the top of the tree and hop on another leaf as it gracefully falls to the ground. <gasps> wow, that's beautiful. That really took me there, Terry. It took me into that picture, and it's and it's. Pure magic right there, seeing them on a leaf and just navigating. Any other fairy bits of stories? My fairies are water skiing on the lake here. <laughs> 
down to the water and then skiing across the surface of the water. Wow. I can see that. <laughs> we got the best of all worlds here. Well, actually, I was thinking about star portals. Maybe the fairy would like to go to the next star, to another world. Mm -hmm. They could go to another world and find out what star they may belong to, right, Santari? Visiting friends on other stars and other places. They could go see other friends on other stars. There you go. I love that. And they could be singing a song together from that particular place, which introduces that star language and that light language um, mm. practice, which is really important to have for children. Also, I want to say that fairies dance on the ocean. And when you see the sparkle on the ocean sometimes, that's the fairies, you know, 10 million fairies dancing on the ocean. <laughs> That's a great reminder. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great reminder. Cynthia, any, any thoughts on, on fall fairies? <laughs> uh, well, I prefer not to go into the realm of thought right now. I'm just enjoying the uh, sure. looking into this space. Sure. But thank you. I, I appreciate it. Sure. Well, it looks like the fairies have um, whispered in Mary Fran's dog's ear and sent the dog to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually a Lona's dog. I'm just a oh. grandparent. <laughs> <laughs> he looks tuckered out. Yes. Um, he likes yeah. to my fairies next, I'm going to play another song for you. My fairies next decided to go through the forest because the meadow was next to the forest. And they decided to, um, to gather some leaves to make themselves a crown, like I said earlier. So I use this very gentle little song uh, that you'll hear here. Um, let's see. And it's by Lorraine Nelson Wolf from the CD, Come Follow Me. When Mary goes walking, the autumn winds blow. The poppers they curtsy, the larches bend low. So I have the children they walk around and pick up leaves. Purple, they, fling down. they just walk and pick up leaves. And one child at a time was given a crown, and then to make that child would come in a circle and do a special dance for the rest of us while we're walking around and picking up leaves. So there's this absolutely magical space happening. We just pick it up. The larches bend the oaks and the beaches, down to bring her a carpet, to make her a crown, to make her a carpet, to make her a crown. And that's how you embody a fairy. <laughs> now you notice the song is very gentle. Um, and it was the song, finding the song randomly on a CD. You know, I just go to my library, I go to different places and I, um, or online um, and on Amazon Music. And I just find particular songs and when one of them really strikes a chord in my heart that was a very gentle song about Mary and so all I had to do is call um, I decided that Mary was one of the fairies so it even rhymes Mary the fairy goes through the forest and that gave me a whole big chunk of a whole story embodying a, a magical story for and with the children um, I had the beginning and now I needed something towards the end and that was so gentle to where they were in, almost walking in a trance. It was amazing to watch them. 
I had them walking nicely on their tiptoes and gently picking up imaginary. Of course, we did have some leaves as well in the center, but just had them pick some of, imagine picking up leaves and making themselves a crown. And then what was beautiful is the, the social aspect, the emotional, the, um, they were bonding with each other because the child in the center would have to go around and, and see and feel, I would explain, feel and see who's the next fairy that needs to have the crown that's been waiting for to wear this crown so they would have to take a few moments and actually feel and go right to that person so it didn't it couldn't be just their best friend it had to be anyone in the circle that they felt that they should give the crown next and then we kept looping the song around that takes a little while if you have 10 to 20 children with you um, and you keep looping that one minute song one minute and 20 seconds song around and I was already transported in a fairy realm by the first few seconds of it. But imagine, you know, five to 10 minutes of looping that song and picking up very gently leaves and making crowns. So again, that's just what I ended up doing this week a lot with the children and, and they loved it. So um, mm -hmm. I will, you know, just a practical way to share how some of this applies to yourself and by the way, there's nothing wrong with you going into your own forest, making yourself a crown today, tomorrow, any day, and actually sending us a beautiful picture of your beautiful uh, living crown. This is not um, a living crown, but it, it does for now. So a beautiful living crown that you make um, for your inner child, for your magical child. I'm all for that as well. <laughs> mm. You're a wealth of inspiration. I think it's probably just coming up to the end of the time. Is that right? Our Zoom technology is allowing us to be on here longer than we thought. We thought that we would be cut off from recording at about 90 minutes, but I think we're doing okay. Um, I wanted to also take a few moments um, now and, um, you know, share my excitement for you being here to co-create this. Um, just from my heart to yours to know that um, you have stepped into this magic and you allowed me to share my magic with you. This means a lot. So thank you. <laughs> and I uh, hope that you'll journey with us on the uh, new mystics program, new modern mystics. Which will, yeah, we'll have the call next week and then... Um, we will have a couple of calls in November and then everyone who, if um, you sign up for the whole, um, I believe, let's see, let's share the screen one more time if I have it up here or I may not have it up here. Um, and I will bring it up again. If you are um, coming on a monthly, you know, come on a monthly basis where you come for the whole journey, either one. And if you cannot somehow make it to the video call, those, um, everyone who's registered will receive their um, recordings as well to see what's going on that week and be able to go online. And if they have questions about any of the fl fun, playful homework, here it is. So you could come per month uh, one, two video calls live. So not every Saturday, just once or twice, depending on the month. Um, or you can come on to um, the full. Um, can everyone see this? I'm sorry. Maybe not yet. Here. Not yet. Can you all see it? Yeah. So just coming up. Just coming up. So I was moving it through. Um, there's a one per month, one online course, pay per month. Um, and then come on and there is a, a very nice um, discount for the full course because that's a full journey. And we know the full journey has the, um, the depth of the magic in it. So that's kind of nice. And it goes on from October to May, which is really eight months of journeying through this magic, which is, I think, very exciting for me that I get to do it with you this way. Um, because I cannot be in your part of the world right now um, to do it there. So, and Santari, of course, cannot be um, 
in your part of the world either. He's in UK, I'm in Cincinnati. And yet nothing can stop us from being magical together. So that's the beauty. So again, if you if there's any questions or anything, it could email or private message us or whatever it is you need. Um, and we'll be more than happy to support or weave with you anything you need to create um, in your mystical, magical world or bring it out into the world from that inner space. Mm -hmm. Anything else? You know, I think we've probably covered all that we wanted to on this um, short video. Uh, there's a wealth of material to wade through on the website. Uh, if you do have any questions, send us an email. Um, do we have the Facebook group set up yet? I think I do. It's, a, it's set up as a secret group right now, and all I have to do is go and um, turn it into a closed group. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's it for now. <laughs> Next week, the journey begins. The journey begins. The real journey begins. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you want to real say? I, I was, was going to say thank you, Santori, and thank you, Cesarina. It's beautiful. Yes, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you, Marika, thank you. and thank you, Terry, yeah. and thank you, Ilona, and thank you, Bailey, and thank you, Cynthia, and thank, thank you. you. Teresa and all those who RSVP who couldn't be here there are about 10 of them all of together I will um, try to email them and say hi and um, they know who they are <laughs> yeah. bye bye okay all right see you next week hopefully bye bye. Bye for now. much love bye bye thank bye you bye. bye for now